Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're going to look at how you can perform some special actions in Little Nav Map. So earlier, I already posted a video about a Little Nav Map and some more, I would say, step-by-step -step plan, right? A complete walkthrough. But I want to show you some more advanced features which you could use during your flight planning. And that specifically has to do with the uh, standard terminal approach routes, uh, which you can configure and how they are influencing your flight plan. And especially there's one thing which is, let's say in most cases important, that's to make sure that you're selecting the correct transition. So what I already did, if I zoom into uh, my flight plan, I planned to fly flight already, right? I'm using an SID, a stand instrumental departure from runway 24, then following this beacons up to inkjet and inkjet, I will pick up the star route, which will brings me to Rot, which is Rotterdam. And if we go to the, uh, a map that's over here right but as you can see it now will directly go to runway 24 which is i would say not what i want because i want to fly a certain route right i want to maybe i would say approach or i should say uh, route i should say approach right because that's your official wording so if we zoom to the uh, right side or move to the right side then we can see the procedures which i also showed in my previous video but in this case, I want to use an ILS approach. I'm selecting runway 24 as the one uh, which I want to uh, use. And then I can see the two approaches, right? So let me close these ones down. There's the uh, ILS with one transition and the ILS with two transitions. Now, the cool thing is that if you right click on them and you say preview all the procedures, then you can see uh, both of them, right? You can see uh, this one and uh, the other one. Uh, it's, I would say it's sometimes it's pretty hard to figure out which one you select, right? Because you can see, hey, I'm moving around and it's not that easy to see okay, what you have selected. But as mentioned here, it's there. This one has one transition, right? So from our rod, which is, I would say, hey, that's the one we also have uh, now in our flight plan, there is a transition. And if you select that one, you can see that the blue line is being added, which will mean that it will fly via Rofox, via EH241, and then et cetera, with all the altitude restrictions, as well as the uh, speed restrictions uh, listed here. So this could be one option, right? But I could also do the other one. So if I close this one down, and if I uh, select this one, which is uh, a different approach, right? I, uh, ILS approach 24, but via transition ROT. So that's the one we need to select. There you can see I'm flying a little bit, I would say a wider angle uh, to the airport. So I'm flying, I would say a little bit further to the, uh, what is it, Northeast and then flying back. So depending on what you want, you can select either of them, right? So uh, once you've selected the one you, let's say, want to use, you can right click it and then you can say insert ILS 24EH. 252 via transition rod into the flight plan. And the thing I want to show you is if you don't do that, right? You do it like this, then it will not idly create a flight plan. So let me first do that, which will uh, add the ILS approach. But as you can see, right? If I would uh, hide the other maps, uh, you see weird things are happening, right? Because it flies directly to EH253 and you need to make a very sharp turn which will likely not work in your case because uh, I would say the airplane will likely crash. So I'm deleting these ones and it will delete the complete, let's say procedure. And then I'm selecting the transition one, which I selected earlier, then say, okay, insert uh, this one in the approach. And now you can see it makes, I would say a nicer turn, which makes it suitable for you to fly. Even the distances are uh, there, but also the restrictions are shown right, e, uh, EH253, we need to be at 2,000 feet. Here we can see the ILS information. If we hover over it, we can see, hey, it's ILS category one, a glide scope is there, the DME is there, right? Uh, glide slope is it, right? Yeah, glide slope. Uh, DME, this is measure equipment is there, and this is also the RSV, uh, which is there. The frequency is critically important, especially when you're flying, right? Because you need to program the ILS frequency because else the airplane won't pick up the uh, ILS frequency. As you can see, there's a CAT1, uh, so be aware of that. 
And the nice thing is that you can also see the distance to the last uh, leg, right? So you can hover over this and uh, you can see some more information. Uh, if you're zooming into the map, which you also can still do, right? You can see some more things uh, are showing here, right? So this brings us uh, from the round tour. Uh, if we would fly this one, uh, pretty nice one, nice weather. Uh, and that's it. So once you've done this, right, this is setting up the uh, standard instrument, standard terminal approach route and the or arrival route and the approach, always mixing those two up. Mm. So sorry for that. And I'd say that's relatively easy and makes it nice to fly. Now there's always, I would say, and there's one recommendation, which I also showed in my uh, previous video, and it's that you need to watch these uh, uh, details, right? So in this case, it cannot calculate the top of climb or top of descent, right? So Either the flight plan is too short, which is likely the case, or the altitude is set too high. And then the climb and decent speeds in the aircraft data are too low, right? So what you'd likely need to do if you uh, see that error, you need to modify this value, right? So I'm going to set it to 5,000 feet and then see, and then you can see that the error is gone. So it will give you enough information to figure out where you need to fly to. Now, if we walk to the flight plan, we can see, okay, hey, what do we need to do, right? Runway uh, 24, then the beacons, which are part of the SID, which can be defined here, because in the procedure, there's which procedure is uh, applicable. Uh, and then uh, for the missed ILS, right? So that's for the missed approach. We also see that information is listed here. And if we scroll to the right, we can see some more information about uh, the nautical miles remaining from start to end, uh, the ETAs, the few. Uh, the wind speeds and also uh, the uh, radio frequencies, right? So those are, I'd say, critically important, but very useful to use. Now, if you want to use this flight plan, then you can, of course, uh, save the flight plan. So for Flight Simulator 2020, right, don't forget that you need to hit the exit button. That will say, okay, hey, if I export the option, it says, hey, you're departing from an airport, but actually you might want to define a parking spot. So what you can do here is you can say select starting position, which will bring up this list. And that will give you the ability to select a parking spot, right? So I can, for example, select a parking, parking spot 30, and that will make a parking spot 30 uh, the starting point for my flight. Then it will export it. Make sure that you're exporting it to the correct data or to the correct folder, which is the local app packages folder. Inside that folder, you will find the flight simulator folder. There you will find the local state and it will get this name automatically. You can rename it if you want. I'm simply going to press save and then it's done. Now to show you where I'm departing from, right? What you see is that once you select the parking spot, it has put a yellow mark around it uh, to show you, okay, hey, where's that parking spot? So that's cool. Uh, again, if we would zoom out, we can also see this nice uh, graph at the bottom. Where we can see, okay, hey, this is the uh, the angle we, we need to fly, right? This is the ILS category, so we need to be in this uh, green part. This is the distance between them, and you can use that, for example, for the approach or the using VNAV, right, to elevate or to increase your altitude or decrease your altitude. You can see the top of descent, so that's all kind of cool. Uh, and I will show that in a separate video how you can use that. So here ends this video where we looked at some additional features which I didn't show in my initial video about little nav map. And that was specifically adding the approach uh, using transitions and also exporting the file and then let's say selecting the parking spot for Flight Simulator. That last one is optional. You don't need to do it, but if you want to do it as realistic as possible, then I definitely would recommend to do that. Here ends this video uh, where we looked at a lot of things. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then make sure that you click the like button. And also, of course, don't forget to subscribe to my button or subscribe to my channel, I should say. And then hit the bell button so you get notifications if you want to uh, get a notification once I post the video. And with that, I wish you happy flying. Enjoy Flight Simulator. Thanks for watching and see you back next time.